Steven and I like to do it here before we actually enter the main Yale campus so we can see the things I'm talking about. Uh, so New Haven was founded in 1638 by John Davenport and it was the first planned city in America which means that the roads were planned out on a 9 by 9 uh, square grid with the New Haven Green which is right behind you as the center of the Now we turn to the history of Yale and how we got our name. So Yale uh, was actually known as the Collegiate School. And this is because, uh, well, we were named after a major donor later on, which I will cover in the story. But to begin, we were known as the Collegiate School and we were founded in Killingworth, Connecticut uh, in 1701. Killingworth does no longer like, exist under that name. It's actually known as Clinton, Connecticut now. Uh, but it still exists, the land, land is still there. Uh, it was, uh, the Collegiate School was founded by Abraham Pearson, uh, and it was just a very small operation, just a couple of students in a room at his house. He uh, unfortunately passed away shortly after founding the school in 1707, and that's when the Collegiate School moved to Saybrook, Connecticut. Uh, but they weren't very happy there, and they were trying to actively look for a place to move to, and they needed more money in order to do that, so they started to seek major donors. The first major donor that came around was Jeremiah Demmer. He donated a couple of books and some money to the school. So not only did they get this major donation, but they also got free land from New Haven, which is this land that we're standing on now, and they also got a lot of tax breaks, which is why they moved here. So they found kind of the perfect place and they had the money to do so. So they were really thankful for this huge donation that they decided to rename themselves uh, Yale College in his honor. But he was abroad at this time and back in the day the only way to correspond was through letters. So they sent him a letter saying, thank you so much for all of the donations. Uh, we have renamed ourselves after you. And then he never got the letter because he died while he was abroad and he died before the letter got to him. So. He never figured out that his college was named after him. And during the American um, Civil War, he was also um, known for a couple of other things besides, you know, being president for a really long time and such. He um, was known for three things majorly. Uh, the first one is that when he was president during the Civil War, he refused to send his students who were from the South back to. Um, their their homes in the south because he thought that it was more important for them to talk about their ideas in the classroom and have debates instead of going back to um, the battlefield and probably dying so most other northern university presidents did not have that view they sent all their students back home uh, but he was the only one who didn't do that another thing that he's famous for is that Um, and it was built in 1930 by an architect named James Rogers. Um, he really wanted to build a cathedral, um, but Yale really wanted a library. And so when he first submitted the blueprint, he called it Sterling Memorial Cathedral. Uh, but the school was like, no, we want a library. Uh, but the architect was also very stubborn and really wanted to build the cathedral, so he submitted the same blueprint and changed the name to Sterling Memorial Cathedral. <laughs> I'm 
since the inside of the library, um, and since we are a secular school, you can see there are a lot of um, images carved in the, with the, the walls and the windows, but uh, that look like the images, but actually they all tell the history of the university. Um, and in the back we have a portrait of Mother Yale. Um, and in the back also is where all the books are kept. So that goes up uh, 14 stories. Um, and we, we recently had alumni reunion, so on the side we have like, um, other books written by uh, alumni. Thank you. 